functions on that interface. Um, also, the .NET virtual machine supports so-called explicit, explicit interface um, implementation. What does this mean? Uh, .NET object, uh, .NET class can implement an interface, and then wherever this interface is needed, it would be automatically be upcast to that interface and um, well used there. But if you implement it as an explicit interface then even in C-sharp you have to cast it explicitly to the interface to make use of the interface. Um, what advantage does this have? Well, in .net, this .NET feature was created because of, well, bad luck. Uh, because they started with non-generic collections and because sometimes uh, implemented uh, compare and because their new generic collections also, um, of course, implemented the old non-generic interfaces so that you could use them, uh, or you could make use of generic faster collections in old code. Um, you now suddenly had a problem uh, that sometimes they wanted a different behavior for some of their older interfaces when you were using the new types, the new generic types. And so they introduced um, explicit interface um, implementation, where now whenever this specific interface needs to be used, it is only available if you explicitly cast it, so that code which would not correctly work or which would behave unexpectedly, would, would be automatically, implicitly um, cast, um, does not, without any compile time error, suddenly throw up. In F sharp, every interface implementation is explicit, and in F sharp, if you implement an interface, it is automatically um, explicitly implemented. So always explicit. Um, so this it raises an error if I call the foo function without explicit. Yes, it would be a compile time error. There is no function foo. Compiler or not runtime? Mm -hmm. Compiler, uh, compiler error. Um, this somehow looks not that um, convenient, but in practice, actually, I have, I think, in all my code of the last six months, I found three places where I had to do this explicit um, cast. So typically, it's not so much of a problem. Strangely, now. Okay, um, what does it support? Well, one hour. I promise I would be finished by now. <laughs> um, metaprogramming. It does not support metaprogramming in the common Lisp style. It also does not support it in, um, how is this OCaml uh, o um, uh, thing called? OCaml P4 or uh, so something like that. Uh, it is also not uh, like in Dylan, so you don't have full-scale um, type-safe uh, referential, uh, uh, referential, uh, um, full-scale type-safe makers with referential integrity. You don't have them, but you have a little bit. You can quote expressions, so you can write an a sharp expression, quote it, and you get back. And, uh, the AST of the expression, which you later then can evaluate, and you can use this evaluation to compile it, of course. Um, we do have syntactic sugar from computation expressions, also known as monads. So you can write your own monads and then use them with a quite convenient syntax. And of course, the .NET virtual machine um, supports some uh, stuff which can be used for metaprogramming. You can use attributes, you can use reflection, uh, both inspection of types as well as um, creation of types through this in, uh, uh, data, as well as emit uh, intermediate language um, instructions during runtime. This is, at the end, quite um, flexible. But uh, as again, um, it's limited, but let's see how this limited uh, metaprogramming uh, looks like. Code quotation. This is the syntax for quoting expressions. I write 1 plus 1 
and 1 plus 1 is an addition of two numbers. And with this arrow, at at arrow, I quote it. And also, I can splice uh, this uh, thing, like here, add expression. And this means that this add expression, if it is an uh, expression which is let bound, like here, um, this expression is like, um, well, is inserted at that place, of course, with um, more or less with high precedence. So it is not like we would uh, write 2 plus 1 plus 1, which would be 2, uh, two times 1, which is 2 plus 1, it's 3, but it would be 2 times uh, 1 plus 1, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. Um, but I think if you look at here, because it's an abstract syntax tree, it's, I think, obvious why this is the way. Um, at the start, we have a call of the operator multiply with two arguments. We have an argument list here. This, uh, remember, this is the syntax for a list, for starting list. Then value, two. Then the next item in the list is a call, again, of an operator addition in this, uh, this time, again, with an argument list, with two values, each is one. And we are with um, a sharp, uh, with uh, pattern matching, ML style pattern matching, uh, such EST uh, visitations are I would say acceptably simple, um, but of course it's not as easy as if you would have quasi uh, quotation and stuff like that. But people, for instance, a very good application of that part, even before F sharp was extended um, with the modern um, computation expression syntax, people uh, were able to write monad, uh, monads with an acceptable syntax by using code quotations. What did they do? They used more or less just a type, which implement, uh, uh, just a function, which took an expression and compiled it to IL. Yeah. And then uh, the only difference would be that you would have to call the function, open the expression, write your expression code, and because nearly everything is an expression, you are quite flex flexible in that, close the expression, and then you could use your um, if then else for loops and so on or uh, while do select in your SQL query expressions in your S in your query monad uh, even without the uh, monads. Now that we do have monads, well, code quotation is not used that often, but for instance, it is used for uh, one unit testing framework. You say I have a test and I place there an assertion and give it as a code quotation. And now, if you uh, it executes this unit test, and if it fails, it will um, show you um, more or less it will destructure this expression that failed into several parts and uh, show where the, is the first comparison that failed. So you will not see this expression failed, but this expression failed at that part, which is convenient. So, for instance, then you could really sometimes just assert for 10 different equalities at once because you know the unit testing framework um, will pick out the correct one anyways. Which is convenient. Okay, and spl spliced expression will behave just like some evaluated value. Mm. This spliced also, by the way, okay, this add expression variable okay. is of type EXPR. Okay. Actually, in this case, it's even of uh, uh, EXPR of integer, because okay. one plus one is an expression of two integers which will return an integer. So it's a type expression, and this is a variable. And this percent add expression, you can really think of that like the percent s in a printf string in a format string. It really just means um, I will place here, um, I will insert this thing here. The only thing is that instead of uh, saying percent %e and then say add expression at the right, you just write the variable name which you want to insert uh, also. And then, yes, but uh, this, uh, you must really think of this as an abstract syntax tree, if you see this. And then you will say 
there, uh, this expression is a multiplication which has two, which has add expression. So this call here is of type expression. Like this outer call here is of type expression. Like value is of type expression. Yes. So expression is a discriminated union of values, of calls, of lambdas, of variables, of let's bound variables. And then you only have a tree of expression. And well, that's mostly it. So this add expression is really just a copy by value this abstract syntax tree into this position of my expression. So you have to call it once to get the real value behind to evaluate yeah. it? Or, or if you want to evaluate it, you have to implement it yourself. Okay. <laughs> so this is not something where you um, just say now dot .invoke and it will be automatically compiled and okay. it's there. But just if now if you're getting too nervous, of course there's a library for that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, um, so it not looks like expression trees in link in C sharp. No, um, it's it is more or less the same as the expression trees in link, but it is its own implementation because um, it represents um, a sharp expressions, and these C sharp link expressions um, miss many things that exist in a sharp. Mm. and have things that a sharp doesn't need. Uh, but it is actually quite similar. The only thing is that here the expression type is really just the expression type. It's really just an abstract syntax tree. Whereas in C sharp, uh, it's of course an expression type and it's, it's also a compiler and it's also included its own visitor and, it, it, and so on. So mm. in link they put three different things in one. In a sharp expression is an expression, a visitor is a visitor, and the compiler is a compiler. Yeah. But basically it has the same idea. Mm. And you use it for quite the same things. Uh, yeah. Computation expressions. One ups. Yeah. So for those who is a little bit unsure about what a monad is. <laughs> wow, so, so few! <laughs> I didn't know it until a few days ago. <laughs> no, um, basically, in programming languages, a monad is an expression, or a monad is a value which. Um, <laughs> which return value? No, which represents, this was the word what I wanted to say, which represents the computation. So it is not something that has, it is not a value which has been evaluated, it is not a function which can be called, mm -hmm. but it is a value which represents several steps of an expression, uh, of a computation. What is a computation? A computation is something that takes data and transform data and then transform data again, or sometimes does transform data, sometimes not. But uh, everything which is doable in the language, if you would uh, like say, capture that part and represent that part, including its steps in between, then it's a monad. So actually I can think of a monad as a se ordered sequence of instructions? Yes, okay. that's correct. This is also the reason why in C++ you would implement a monad as a collection with a forward iterator and then several um, function classes. Okay. And that's it. Um, just that the syntax in C++ would not be that nice. So, how are monads um, created? Well, I will not show how to implement them, but for those who are interested to implement your own monad, you have to implement two functions, bind and return. And if you want, I will later explain the disugaring on the whiteboard afterwards, but for now let's just say monads are simple to implement in a sharp itself, you can write your own and you call them as if they would be um, the, uh, built in into the language. And here is like the do notation in Haskell. We have this simplified um, monad notation, this computation expressions in F sharp. And SEQ uh, is for sequence, 
which is a monad for lazy sequences. And 